The time has finally come! The Wildstar free-to-play test realms are up and we're ready to roll and find out what big changes are coming this autumn. And by the time has come, I mean, the time came about a week ago, but apparently Blizzard was doing something stupid, so I have to talk about that too. Before I could give my opinion on any of this, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research. Then I just googled it. So the first thing I'm really happy to say is that my first video on Wildstar Free-to-Play, way back in May, still holds up. This seems to be the path that they have decided to take. They are including a subscription, which gives you a couple of bonus perks, as well as the ability to buy things from a cash shop with either real money or Omni Bits, which are things that you harvest in the wild, and the more things you buy from the cash shop, you get loyalty points, and the loyalty points help unlock things that you would normally have to subscribe to get. Awesome. Cool, that's a pretty full summary. But what else is coming in this upcoming Great Shattering patch? Now, the first major change coming in the patch other than the free-to-play is the new player experience, and this is something that Wildstar desperately needed. Because I don't know if you've played the first 15 levels of Wildstar, but they're kind of boring as shit. Until you get to dungeons, they're kind of boring as shit. They've accomplished this by streamlining the arc ship process at the beginning of the game, allowing you to select the level of tutorial you're interested in taking part in, whether you're new to MMOs or whether you're a veteran or whether you're pretty good at MMOs and all that good stuff. And they're also updating and tuning up the first 15 levels of questing, which I think is sorely needed, because nobody cares about Elevar. That place is terrible. In addition to the streamlining, they're also adding a new level 15 single-player dungeon, kind of similar to the Omnicore 1. It's called the Alpha Sanctum, which is kind of interesting. It gives you a little bit more variety of content at that level because there is very little variety of content until you hit about level 20. So it's good that they're adding this in. It'll give people new things to try out and give a little taste of the dungeon content in the game. Another awesome thing that's coming that's going to help new players acclimate to the game is the revamp of the stat system. Now previously you had primary statistics like Brutality and Moxie and these stats derived your secondary statistics like Armor and Critical Hit and Health. So the primary statistics would, though, change between classes. So Brutality on one class would give you Assault Power, and Brutality on another class would give you Critical Hit. So this became extremely confusing, and it became a job of min-maxing. So they've got rid of these primary statistics. So Brutality, Moxie, fucking gone. This is fucking gone, goodbye. And they're replacing them with just a standard set that goes across all classes. So your core statistics would be Health, Armor, Assault Power... PvP power and defense, things like that. And then you've got a, a nice host of secondary statistics that feel more like they're adding flavor to your character as opposed to being a rigid structure, such as critical severity or multi-hit. Or my favorite stat, Vigor. Vigor, by the way, Carbine, is fucking genius. The Vigor stat is my favorite. You fucking DPS want to stay on the top of me, you gotta stop sucking so much. As a healer, I love you, Carbine, for implementing this. My only real hang-up here is that there are 24 secondary stats and 7 core stats. That's a shit ton of stats. Now, mind you, some of these aren't gonna be relevant for your class, and some of them might be, but, you know, it gives you room to customize, I guess, a little bit more. That's a lot of stats. We'll have to see how it plays. One of the other things they're doing is implementing some changes to quality of life, and one of these comes in the form of changes to the dungeons in the game. Now, what they're planning to do to the dungeons is reduce the number of pulls and increase the general speed you progress through these dungeons. Now, I personally think the dungeons are great the way they are, but then again, I might be wrong. Some hardcore, blah, 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 blah. They're also implementing something that might help alleviate this and cause you to still stay in dungeons just as long. Secondary rewards on dungeons, secondary objectives like killing packs or doing things, now reward you immediately as opposed to at the end of the dungeon, which will give them a little bit more of a tangible effect on how you progress through these dungeons. So yes, they are reducing the number of packs you need to complete to kill your way through the entire dungeon, but they are adding a real reason to go after those secondary objectives that might be off the beaten path. So I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this one yet. I'm a little bit sad that they're changing dungeons, the best part of the game. But I'm also a little bit happy that they're kind of making it a little bit more freeform. But we'll see when it goes live. 
And they've thankfully also removed that god-awful attunement to genetic archives. Now you just need to score bronze on every endgame dungeon. Thank you, Carbine. As somebody who is cons does consider himself probably pretty hardcore when it comes to these games, I actually thank you for this. The attunement for that was uh, insane. Even after the nerf, it was it was it was manageable after the nerf, but it was still nasty. Now it's a lot nicer. It feels more like something you would see in Burning Crusade. Much shorter, much less intensive. And that's about it for all these. Wait, wait, what's this part down here? What's this? I didn't. What? What? So some of the world bosses and like particles and. Wait a minute. They're implementing a new system for world bosses, where you four five-man groups and go out and hunt down smaller bosses in order to summon larger bosses all over the world. Which gives you a reason to team up with your friends to go out into the open world and experience all of the content in there and fight other bosses at endgame level and get awesome rewards? Holy shit, that's awesome! So in my honest opinion, the change in how world bosses work is my favorite part of this game. They've upped a lot of the world bosses to endgame level. Guys like Metal Maw or the weird fucking Stem Dragon out in Elevar. They've all ramped them up to max level and given them endgame rewards. And you can go out into the world and kill them. They, of course, got about a 36-hour cooldown, so they come up maybe once every couple days. But you can also go out into the world and find smaller bosses that are five-mans that you can go kill and get a particle from them, which allows you to summon a world boss in any of these locations. There's a short cooldown between particles, so you can't, like, spam the shit out of them. But you can actually go out and find other monsters group up with your friends to take those out, and then form larger groups with other people to take down a big boss. It's a progression. It's a goal. And it's a system that gives you really tangible rewards. That's fucking awesome. And it gives you a reason to be out in the world again, which is great. No, nothing's worse than having everybody sit in their fucking garrison all the time. But those are the features of the upcoming Wildstar free-to-play that most excite me, and most interest me. I'm really glad that they didn't fall off the wagon like the old Republic did into some terrible predatory free-to-play system. And that they're going to be really fair and really content-heavy as opposed to unfair and nickel and dimey. And it's great. I'm excited. You've got me amped up for free-to-play. Thank God I'm so stoked. So I'm hoping to see you all there. When it does come time for Wildstar to go free-to-play, I'm even considering putting together maybe some sort of Orange Hatter-related guild where we can play together and raid and do dungeons and stuff. And it'll be good times. And you're all welcome, of course, to join us in our weird Nexus adventures. But until then, thank you very much for watching. This has been yet another episode of the Orange Hatter Show. I'm sorry this one's a little weird because uh, this was done at last minute. Because my other episode, something happened. And I'm not going to get into it. But thank you for watching these videos and checking out and having a good time. I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope this has given you some new inspiration to maybe check out Wildstar when it does go free to play in a couple of months. And I hope to see you there, to be honest with you, because I love that game. And I'm sure a lot of people out there, once they've actually given Nexus a real taste, now that they've really fixed a lot of it, will love it too. And hell, we can have a good time raiding and taking down bosses and PvP and having fun. So thank you very much for watching. I love hearing your opinions in the comments. Of course, all the time, I try and respond to as many of you as you can, but uh, recently there have been a lot of comments coming on these videos, and it's kind of hard to track. But I do try to get back to you guys. I love hearing from you. I love talking to you. And if you're interested, we have a Steam group that we're doing uh, some games in. I've got a couple people there. So thank you, though, for watching. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. And you have a great one.